Dear audience, with the kind permission of our honorable chair, we are going to start our inauguration ceremony of first Bangladesh Congress on Epidemiology and Public Health 2021. Today, we have among us our chief guest, Mr. Mohammad Abdul Mannan, Secretary, Health Service Division, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, online. We have our special guest, Earl R. Miller, U.S. Ambassador of People's Republic of Bangladesh in the dais. The whole inauguration ceremony will be chaired by Professor Dr. Tahmina Shirin Madam, the Director, IEDCR. To move forward, firstly, I would like to request Dr. Malik Masum Billah, who is the Senior Scientific Officer of the Epidemiology Department, to say a few, uh, few words about the Front Field Epidemiology Training Program Bangladesh. Dr. Malik Masum Billah. Thank you, Dr. Rabbani. I think uh, this is a great opportunity for me to introduce the program. Uh, it is a newer branch of the epidemiology, that is the field epidemiology training program. We will watch a short video of this program so that we can uh, learn the, uh, what the program is about. Who has given their life to something bigger than oneself. A hero is a disease detective. Become a national leader in public health. Learn by doing. Lead outbreak investigations across Bangladesh. Challenge yourself. See health and medical care from a new perspective. Develop your scientific thinking skills. Join a family of FETP graduates from more than 80 countries. Interact and learn from global experts in public health. FETPB is an on-the-job, full-time fellowship focused on field-based applied epidemiology and general public health leadership. FETPB fellows evaluate and improve surveillance systems, develop health communication skills, and conduct public health field research on the most important health issues facing the country. FETP is modeled on the 50-year-old flagship CDC Atlanta program to train its core epidemiologists and public health leaders called the CDC's EIS program. In 2013, the Institute of Epidemiology, Disease Control, and Research, IEDCR, started the FETP program in Bangladesh. It is the first ever two-year residency course on applied epidemiology in Bangladesh. Fellows get books, laptops, monthly stipend, accommodation facilities, and grants for research. Fellows get opportunities to present at national and international conferences. Fellows spend 20% time in the classroom and 80% time in the field. Government medical doctors, government veterinarians, and doctors of the Army Medical Corps can apply. Successful graduates will be awarded two certificates, one from U.S. CDC and one from the university as a master's degree in applied epidemiology. Graduates can be promoted as assistant professor, run public health programs, or lead national, district, and Upazilla rapid response teams. FETPB residents and graduates are our boots on the ground in the ongoing battle against public health emergencies. Join FETPB and be a disease detective. So thank you. Uh, this is an honor for the FETP uh, programs that actually we, show, we have found in all over the world where CDC run this program. They have actually arranged the conference yearly. It is a great opportunity for Bangladesh FETP that uh, we started in 2013. We get an opportunity to arrange a conference in a uh, very short period of time. We are grateful for US CDC and IDCR and the Epidemiology Association of Bangladesh to give us the opportunity. And uh, a lot of fellows are presenting and graduates are presenting. I think it is already come in the discussion. We hope this opportunity will continue in the future so that Bangladesh FETP can also show their uh, activities throughout the world. FETP, we have the advanced program and the frontline programs. 
Recently, we are starting the FTP intermediate. So advanced program is two years, and uh, frontline programs is two months. And intermediate, we are starting like six to nine month course of the Upojala Health Managers. So these are the three courses, and it is, USCDC is providing the technical supports, IDCR with the Ministry of Health actually uh, implementing the course. So thank you, I think it is a great opportunity for our fellows and graduates. And also, I just want to thank our graduates and fellows that to participate the whole activities of the COVID-19. The way they responded throughout the uh, pandemic, actually it is, uh, we cannot express their gratitude. And uh, they were uh, involved in contact tracing, case investigation, they're still doing the works in the Upojela and districts, and also in the national level. So thank you for getting, giving us opportunity to participate in the program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Masum. Thank you for uh, giving some lights of field epidemiology training program in Bangladesh. Moving forward, I would like to request our honorable chairperson, Professor Dr. Tahmina Shirin Madam, to give away his presentation on IDCR and his activity. Dear audience, our director, Professor Dr. Tahmina Shirin Madam. Honorable Chief Guest, uh, Secretary Health Services, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, uh, Mohammed Abdul Mannan, sir. Uh, special Guest, His Excellency, Mr. Milan, Ambassador, U.S. Ambassador to Bangladesh, and all the guests and audiences online and uh, offline. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Actually, I will give a brief uh, presentation on IEDCR. Actually, what we are doing at IEDCR, I will just uh, describe in a very, uh, very briefly. Uh, so actually, IEDCR was established in 1976, and uh, then uh, it was recognized as, or designated as National Influenza Center in 2007. Uh, IDCR is the focal institute for the NIC that I have already mentioned, Global Health Security, One Health uh, Secretariat, International Health Regulation, Football Emergency Response, and Global Disease Detection Center for US CDC. And we have several collabor collaboration with different um, university that you can see on the uh, screen, and we have also collaboration with the global organization. And through, with, with, through this collaboration, uh, we can uh, do the research. We, they can also contribute in different surveillances and uh, outbreak response. This is the organogram of IEDCR. Um, uh, we have uh, bar statistics, medical entomology, epidemiology, medical social science, uh, microbiology, parasitology, virology, and um, entomology department for these are all uh, these uh, five are laboratory departments and so the lab basically the IDCR laboratories that is the virology microbiology lab these are BSL2 laboratories and we have molecular facilities uh, serological facilities and cell culture at um, the department of virology and we have uh, the facilities for culture sensitivity and we have biotech for um, advanced diagnosis for microbiology department. And we do um, bioefficacy test in the entomology department. There are some few, few um, photos of uh, laboratory. Uh, so another thing is that we have also a IEDCR field laboratory at Cox's Buzzer Medical College that is when there was an outbreak among the FDA means that it is at the end of 2017 and right that time uh, US CDC helped us a lot a group of um, specialists from US CDC they came to Bangladesh with the logistics and reagents for the diagnosis of this uh, uh, that is the for the diagnosis of diphtheria actually all we know that um, as because we have vaccine against this um, coronibacterium diphtheria, which is uh, within the program, I mean EPI. So nowadays, the, in Bangladesh, we don't get any uh, 
patients suffering from um, diphtheria. So almost in all mm, the facilities, we don't have the, uh, ha have the capacity to diagnose the diphtheria right now. Be but before we had the capacity, but as because we don't have this disease, so um, people are not uh, practicing those things. So when there was an outbreak ab among the FDA men, mm, at that time, um, USCDC brought those uh, reagents and uh, logistics, and IDCR was the only institute who could uh, diagnose with the support from them. And we did this at the di uh, detection of uh, Cordyobacterium diphtheria at IDCR. But at that time, we failed that the samples, uh, uh, samples were collected in the camps. They shipped the samples to IDCR, and then they get the result from here. So it takes time. And it, it was a big challenge in, uh, for the management perspectives. So uh, at that time, WHO supported us, and we also th thought that if we had we have a laboratory at the site, it would be helpful for uh, early detection of the pathogens, and um, they can start uh, treatment earlier. So uh, with this concept, uh, we established a field laboratory at uh, Cox's Bazar Medical College, and at that time, the co principal of Cox Cox's Bazar Medical College also helped us a lot. He gave us the space for, for this laboratory, and still the laboratory is there. They are actively participating since the beginning of the pandemic, and still they are doing the thing. And you, uh, I would like to uh, let you know that the diphtheria diagnosis is also going on, and still we are getting, though the very few number of diphtheria cases, but still we are getting the diphtheria case um, over there. Uh, some, uh, and uh, one thing is that we also got community people, uh, the host community, they are being infected uh, with these uh, organisms, and still they are getting the organisms. So another thing is that I have already mentioned the One Health Secretariat. Uh, since uh, 2016, One Health Secretariat is at IDCR, and um, the IDCR director as a member secretary and of the Interministerial Steering Committee and Technical Advisory Committee, and um, the group, and also a chairperson of Coordination Committee of uh, One Health Secretariat, and IDCR um, uh, coordinates all the activities which when required. So actually, IDCR is based on these uh, four objectives. Epidemiological surveillance, outbreak investigation and response, and uh, training and research. So uh, here, uh, I will show you a few surveillance that is going on at IDCR. These are the surveillance that we are conducting now. Uh, I don't want to mention all the names. You can see these uh, on the screen. And uh, one thing is that we also have the event-based surveillance, which is very important. And uh, where we monitor the uh, print and electronic media, we also receive call from different places. And after getting information, we verify them, and we, uh, then we respond. So this is a very, I mean, I, I should say this is an innovative uh, thing that we are dealing with, because through this platform, we get we get the, um, uh, the information of the outbreaks. Maybe it's unusual. Actually, through this event-based surveillance, we got the first case of COVID-19 in Bangladesh. So uh, uh, I should say this is an excellent platform that we are using. The outbreak investigation response by IDCR. Uh, the, the mechanism at that is that the people who are working at IDCR, they are the national rapid response team. There are three triads. National Rapid Response Team, District Rapid Response Team, and Upazila Rapid Response Team. So IDCR is uh, participating as the member of um, National Rapid Response Team, and they take uh, and with the with the um, uh, District Rapid Response Team and Upazila Rapid Response Team. Actually, we um, respond the outbreaks, and this is the mechanism how th these move. We have a POC at IDCR, become activate, activated and um, co co coordinate with all the sectors and then uh, go um, and then do the invest response and inv investigation and response. And one thing is that the One Health approach, this is, we are practicing these things in a very good way. 
if there is any outbreak of genetic origin in that case not only the human health people move for the investigation uh, they, they, uh, they in in that team uh, team um, animal health uh, wildlife and uh, other people they also take part and the example of this one health uh, the outbreak investigation in one health approach here is we uh, we uh, here you can see this uh, this is a, a nipa outbreak it, you know it's a genetic disease comes from bats so here the human health people and the people from eco health alliance they moved uh, together and here you can see the bat truth i mean they uh, in the outbreak investigation not only we go for the detection of the uh, or the detection of the pathogen along with this we also try to um, understand the um, ecology and the um, where the bat truth uh, the distance between the um, affected person or the um, tree and the bat truth and those things and the anthropology everything is there so uh, it, it, it actually helps in the analysis of the data after coming back from the outbreak uh, investigation so here you can see the eco people who are working in eco health they are uh, they are collecting the sample from bat uh, these are the major outbreak response that are um, conducted by ie this year so and here you can see the frequency outbreak that happen in every year uh, here uh, um, it is shown that the outbreaks from 2015 to uh, 2000 21 actually this year we also responded to outbreak along with uh, covid uh, pandemic and in the in 2020 most of the outbreak was the covid uh, 19 related outbreak and and the, uh, I, I actually at the beginning of the outbreak idc was the only institute who um, went for the outbreak and uh, took part in the containment of the disease uh, there are some snapshots regarding the outbreak responses. Uh, here uh, you can see the outbreak that uh, happened in 2019, the dengue outbreak. Uh, uh, this, is, this is the dengue outbreak again in 2019 and chikungunya outbreak in 2017. That is also uh, conducted the whole the molecular testing um, was only done by IDCR and IDCR took a very um, robust role in um, this uh, uh, chikungunya outbreak in 2017. So during the pandemic, during this pandemic uh, situation, I mean the COVID-19 pandemic situation, IDCR actually activated since the beginning of the pandemic and even. Uh, and well ahead of declaration of the pandemic by WHO. Actually, we had started working um, since January 2020, when there was, uh, the outbreak was only limited within Wuhan. And um, uh, right that time, uh, we started collecting samples from the suspected cases, and um, we, we started laboratory testing. And um, from February 2020, um, IDCR started daily press briefing and press release in the website. And uh, we also um, prepared health declaration form for all the passengers who arrived uh, in um, Bangladesh. It started since uh, 21st January. So we started um, surveillance at the point of uh, entry, screening um, when, the, when the people used to arrive in, uh, in the country. And at that time, cell phone-based surveillance was um, done, and still it is going on. And uh, people were interviewed within first three days, and then follow-up call for uh, on um, 10th day and 14th day by interactive voice re um, response. And we have, uh, we have uh, now we, uh, still we have the hotline. It was initially it was four hotlines. Now then it increased up. Uh, above 75 hotlines. And um, these hotlines are active for 24-7. Uh, um, and around 3,000 to 4,000 phone calls per day actually we receive. And through this phone call, we try to identify the suspected cases. We, if there is any suspected case, we, re, uh, we collect the sample from those patients and we do the contact tracing. The main thing is that we collect the sample from door to door. 
not the people come to the booth and give the sample. So this is the way we try to contain the disease. Uh, here you can see the, the IDC are also participated in quarantine activities. When the people came from Wuhan, uh, and uh, at that time they were in the, uh, in the quarantine place for 14 days, and IDC collected samples from all the passengers and did testing, uh, laboratory testing. And in, uh, when the pandemic started, uh, d d uh, since then we uh, tried to strengthen our laboratory capacity and we started doing the RT-PCR for COVID-19. At that time, IDCR uh, Virology Lab is, was the only lab in Bangladesh who could identify the uh, pathogen. And thus I IDCR identified the first case on uh, 8th March. Along with this routine activity, I mean the detection of COVID-19, IDCR was uh, designated, I mean, during this pandemic, IDCR also is designated as a reference laboratory for pandemic, uh, for COVID-19. And in this connection, we are participating in validation of different PCR kits that arrive in Bangladesh. We also do the quality check of uh, other PCR laboratories that are existing in Bangladesh. We are also conducting the uh, training uh, uh, during, uh, for this training, we get support from FAO. We are also getting lots of support from US, USAID um, in, in, in terms of sample collection, laboratory testing. So I would like to thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so in this way, actually, we are working at IDC, I mean, the COVID-19 response. Along with this, we are, we are our um, other surveillance activity, outbreak investigation, everything is going on along with this COVID situation, uh, COVID uh, detection. Uh, now the research activity, we are, uh, during this COVID, uh, I mean, uh, regarding this COVID-19, we are uh, doing some research, researches that, that these are the researches that we are doing, uh, some of them are already um, done and um, uh, we submit one, one is published and one uh, another was in under review is uh, already submitted so and some uh, some is on half of the way and the other activity other research activities that are, that are going on at IDCR now the workforce development this is another part the, uh, or the training program this is another objective out of these four objectives we have long courses that is uh, FETPB, uh, which, uh, which is uh, supported by US CDC, and it, it started since uh, 2013. And we propose for another new, two new courses. These are laboratory uh, um, course. Uh, one is MD in virology and MD in microbiology. As because you know we have the expertise, uh, micro, um, um, postgraduate microbiologists and virologists at IDCR. And we, we have a robust uh, system in the um, uh, laboratory system in place and because, you know, IDCR detected the um, uh, dengue during two, uh, 2000 when there was dengue outbreak or dengue hemorrhagic fever outbreak in Bangladesh. They also detected Nipah, Chikungunya, um, and then uh, JE, they are doing the JE, so, so many, and they are also conducting AMR surveillance in Bangladesh. We also did the diphtheria, all these things, and so many surveillance that are going on. So we have, we have uh, uh, I mean, number of stored samples, or we are getting numbers of samples over the days and years, so, and we have the facilities there, so we can easy, easily uh, start our course here. Another one is the intermediate uh, FETP, that is nine month course. And another one is the frontline, this is short course. This is also the epidemiological course for three months and certificate course on the clinical epidemiology. Actually here, the, the, the doctors who are graduated uh, are uh, in the course for the clinical subjects, they used to come for this uh, certificate course. And uh, another one is the distinguished fellowship course. This is for the managerial, uh, the, uh, the doctors who are working at managerial level. Other the sh thing is, um, courses are the short training course. Actually, uh, IDCR used to uh, train the people on the disease surveillance outbreak investigation and infection prevention and control. 
And when there is any outbreak in any parts of the country, uh, world, IDCL used to give the training on those emerging and re-emerging diseases. And here uh, we train uh, people from different um, tiers of the health facilities and different groups of people who are working in the health facilities. I mean, doc the, the, man, uh, the doctors, the nurses, technologists, all of, uh, all of those people, they used to participate in the training course. Uh, one thing that I would like to uh, mention in front of His Excellency, that is the G uh, Global Health Security Agenda Project. This is supported by US CDC. We got, uh, we got fund from US CDC, and uh, of, with this uh, f fund, uh, we, um, uh, these uh, six activities that we are doing now at IDC, none of them, uh, all of them are important. We cannot um, move forward. Uh, um, leaving them one or two uh, of them. Uh, number one is the PHUC, which is very important. The, during this COVID pandemic, the, the role of PHUC was, I mean, uh, I mean, it was, uh, it did a lot of things. Still, they are doing. They are the people who are working in PHUC. Uh, they are um, taking care of the sample collection. Um, the co coordination uh, among other people and all these things. And then the outbreak response, which is one of the mandate of IDC. So this is also very important. We cannot, um, I mean, um, leave it. So another one is the antimicrobial uh, resistance surveillance, that is AMR surveillance, which is uh, uh, started at IDC. I mean, IDC is conducting it since uh, 2017. And, in uh, nine sentinel size all over the country. So we have so many data we are getting. And uh, uh, actually, this is a very excellent surveillance that is conducted by IEDCR. And then another thing is that the um, surveillance coordination and IT. So I, the importance of IT department in uh, IEDCR is very important because we, we need IT support for, for maintenance of our website softwares and we are now um, incorporating data in the go, go data so here we need the um, uh, it support and we are thinking then we will um, pro we will get, we we should have a dedicated server for bioinformatics for the genomics that we want to do in next or, uh, actually we have already started doing this genomic surveillance in bangladesh so this is also very important. Another thing is the improving biosafety, biosecurity, and laboratory capacity development. This is also very important, and the workforce uh, uh, development. So all of we cannot uh, live without any of this. So we have to run this uh, project, uh, th those projects. So another thing is that uh, uh, during my tenure, uh, actually we arranged. Uh, a meeting with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, that is the project implementation uh, um, meeting, uh, committee meeting. And this is part of this project. We have to do this uh, on the regular basis. So as, uh, as this project is, um, uh, will, um, will finish um, on September 2021, um, and it's no cost ex extension. So when we um, arrange those meetings, so one of the points came up that is uh, we can extend that project or we can go to the second phase. So I would like to uh, mention it in front of His Excellency so uh, you, you will be able to understand why we need this, uh, need the support from US CDC or US government. And uh, as because the first phase is uh, done, and uh, so many things that we did and we are doing with the support from them. So uh, we need to continue it. Might be we can, uh, we can ask for the second phase as because the first phase is over. It will be, uh, yeah, it's over. The no, no cost extension is going on. And these are the, um, the books. I mean, the, this is the biosafety, biosecurity guideline, SOPs for in both in English and Bengali, then PHEOC handbook and uh, national guideline for management and prevention of human anthrax. These uh, uh, five books are published with the support from um, uh, USCDC. And these are the posters for the event-based respiratory surveillance. Uh, this is also, um, we, we also 
uh, published this, uh, this two pro uh, poster with the six signals so that if the people, are, I mean, he already distributed those posters in different parts of the country. If they got one, uh, one or two of these signals, they will, they just let us know. And sometimes they send the sample depending on, on these signals and we do testing. And the way forward, actually we are, in IDC we have very few number of people, but our activities is, I mean, endless. So in this regard, we, we, we got a, a, a 10 storied building and uh, now we, we are trying to strengthen the IDC in, in terms of academic division, service division, laboratory strengthening, uh, um, uh, upgradation of existing laboratory capacity and academic courses in the laboratory. Another thing is that the workforce development uh, we already proposed and we already submitted our um, the human uh, submitted the, our requirement for the human resources both in um, health service um, division and also in the education division for the for a strengthening of the public health for the strengthening of the laboratory as well as for the strengthening of the academic win and um, introduce of two courses in laboratory science so so for the collaboration, we want to extend collaboration with the development partners like CD, USCDC. Uh, GHSA project, uh, we need to extend the GHSA project or it may be the second phase. And new global partners included along with existing partner. Um, so uh, other collaboration is the MFINET. We just joined in MFINET for the FETPB. And these are the, uh, these are, is our new organogram. We actually uh, tried to incorporate more than uh, 800 people in the um, system. So uh, we are uh, actually hoping for this new post with the new peoples. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, madam, for your presentation on IDCR. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the FETP graduation and certificate distribution ceremony. I would like to request our Honorable Chair, Professor Tahmina Shirin, Madam, and special guest, Mr. Miller, to hand over the certificates and crests to the FETP graduates. I would also request all the FETP graduates to collect their certificates and crests one by one, as they will be called. Dr. Nobi, Dr. Farooq, and Dr. Alpona, and Dr. Prince will assist in the ceremony. To start with, we'd like to uh, start with the first cohort of FETPB. First, I would like to call Dr. Kazi Ahmed Zaki, fell, uh, graduate from the first cohort, to collect his certificate and crest. Now I'd like to request Dr. Mona Lisa to collect her certificate and crest. <laughs> Dr. Shamshad Rabbani Khan, graduate from the first cohort. Dr. Rabia Sultana, FETP graduate from the first cohort. <laughs> Last but not the least, Dr. Malik Masum Billah, FETP graduate from the first cohort. <laughs> now it's time for the second cohort Please be prepared, the uh, graduates from the second cohort. 
Dr. Nusrat Sharmin Poppy from second cohort. These certificates are given from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, USCDC. Now, Dr. Omar, Dr. Muhammad Omar Kayum, FDP graduate from second cohort. Time for the third cohort graduates. Dr. Shirajul Islam, FETP graduate from third cohort. Dr. Faisal Talukdar, FETP graduate from third cohort. Dr. Faisal Talukdar. Dr. Nishargo Mera Choudhury, FETP graduate from third cohort. Dr. Mohammad Afzalur Rahman. FETP graduate from third cohort. Time for fourth co cohort graduates to collect their certificates and uh, crest. I would like to request Dr. Mohammad Gaji Shah Alam, graduate from the fourth cohort. Dr. Sohel Rahman, Dr. Sohel Rahman from FETP fourth cohort, Dr. Mohammad Shohidul Islam Kokon from FETP fourth cohort. Thank you. Uh, we have some fellows and graduates who could not attend the program due to their sickness. We also express uh, our gratitude and honor to them. Now it's time uh, to hand over the crest to our special guest. I'd like to request our, honor, our honorable chair, Professor Tahmina Shirin Madam, to hand over the crest to Mr. Miller, our special guest. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to request all to take their seats. And I'd request our special guest, Mr. Miller, to give his speech on this occasion. Okay, who wants a long speech? <laughs> You're inches from a clean getaway, and, and okay, one more speech to go. Well, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. It's a pleasure to join you today for the first ever national conference on epidemiology and public health in Bangladesh. You've all heard that uh, I served in Botswana, and there's a wonderful phrase in southern Africa that's very forgiving when there are far too many distinguished guests to recognize individually, and that's all protocols observed. 
and I'm going to speak in English because my Bangla is, is terrible, but I'll, I'll try to keep my remarks uh, uh, short. You know, finding ways to bring people together to discuss and debate science, to share experiences and ideas, and to find common ground and, and create networks for future efforts is always a very positive and noteworthy endeavor, but perhaps never more timely and never more important as we face together the global challenge of COVID-19. And let me just say again, I join you all in honoring and remembering those we have lost around the world from this uh, terrible pandemic. We wish well all those who are ill and send our best wishes and thoughts to their families and loved ones. Thank you to all who organized this event despite the ongoing challenges posed by the pandemic. Special thanks to Professor Flora and her team at the Director General of Health Services, Professor Tamina and our IEDCR partners and colleagues, the field epidemiology training program, graduates and current fellows and our own CDC team. The conference would not have been possible without their tireless efforts. Like all previous pandemics in history, COVID-19 has changed the world and will impact us all for years to come. It certainly has changed my life and how we operate at the United States uh, Embassy, how we work, how we view our jobs, and I suspect it will change the way we look at our lives collectively at health and health systems around the world for many years to come. So I'm glad to be here to support this conference and the important scientific exchange that will take place. Okay. That will take place over these two days and to support these efforts to give greater focus to the fields of epidemiology and public health globally and here in Bangladesh. One thing the pandemic has taught us, as I said before, is how truly interdependent we all have to be to protect this vulnerable world that we're privileged and responsible to share. But it's also, it also t has taught us that policy and action are only as effective as the science and information they are built on. We can promote mask wearing and social distancing as we are doing here today because we know the science tells us it works. We can promote vaccinations because we know from vaccine trials and post-vaccination surveillance, the vaccines are safe and effective. None of this is possible without epidemiologists and public health experts. Because you're our front line of defense. I don't need to tell you that. You, you've seen over the last 12 months, the first responders working around the clock, every day risking your health to protect ours and your fellow citizens, you are Probably tired of being called heroes, but that's exactly what you are by, by definition. And you've been incredibly valiant. And unfortunately, the, there is still much, much work to be done. COVID cases are increasing here in Bangladesh, and we need to understand why. Is it variants, a lapse in our collective efforts to wear masks, wash hands, and avoid crowded, unventilated, closed spaces? What I tell my staff at the U.S. Embassy and what I tell American citizens here in Bangladesh, how heartbreaking it would be, how tragic it would be to be one of the last people to fall seriously ill, being so tantalizingly close to getting on top of this pandemic. You don't want to be the last soldier killed in the war, right? We have to run through the finish line, continue to use the same prudent practices we've used over the last 12 months. I know it's, we're exhausted and... Uh, our reservoir of patience is probably drying up, but we have to continue to do it, not just for ourselves, obviously, and our families, but for the sake of our communities, fellow citizens, and again, for the sake of the world that we're responsible as health leaders to protect. Will the vaccine remain effective against new strains? Will herd immunity eventually protect us? To get to these answers, we need to turn to our epidemiologists and public health scientists to piece together the information and draw conclusions, just like, as you've heard, a detective does at a crime scene. It's not an easy job, but it is, there's, nothing, there's nothing more important. At the U.S. Embassy in Dhaka, we are really fortunate because we have epidemiologists from the CDC as part of our team. And, you know, the CDC has been working to protect us all for 70 years, and 
I say all because CDC has offices in over 50 countries around the world. And I worked, I stood up the CDC office uh, with the first director back in the mid 90s when that, in Botswana, when that country was uh, battling uh, TB. And then of course I worked very closely uh, through our PEPFAR program as we battled the HIV epidemic. The CDC brought its first medical epidemiologist to Dhaka in 1972, just one year after independence to help fight smallpox. Dr. Stanley Foster, who unfortunately just passed away uh, two weeks ago, spent four years as CDC's first country director in Bangladesh, working with national health workers to eradicate smallpox here. More CDC epidemiologists followed, helping the country eradicate polio and reduce the burden of cholera. They helped establish Bangladesh's strong childhood immunization program, helped understand and address micronutrient deficiencies, and helped investigate, as you heard today, new pandemic potential pathogens such as the Nipah virus. Since 2015, CDC has focused on the global health security agenda, an effort to strengthen public health systems across the globe to detect, control, and ultimately prevent pandemics and large outbreaks. In all of these efforts, CDC's strength has not been simply the funding it brings, although the funding, of course, is uh, very, very important. More importantly, it's the people it brings who mentor and train, like the medical epidemiologists we are here to support and advocate for. But here's the challenge. The World Health Organization and the CDC recommend every country have at least one medical epidemiologist for every 200,000 people in order to effectively run public health and disease control systems. For Bangladesh, this equates to 850 fully trained and employed medical epidemiologists. Practical field-based epidemiological training is relatively new to Bangladesh. Consequently, there are fewer than 50 fully trained and deployed medical epidemiologists here, one for every three to five million people. The CDC-funded flagship two-year epidemiology training program called FETP began in 2014 and graduates only seven per year. A new CDC Ministry of Health nine-month fellowship called FETP Intermediate is being planned for perhaps 100 to 150 of the Upazela Health and Family Planning Offices. So if Bangladesh is to reach its target of 850 fully trained and employed field epidemiologists, we need to work together to scale those training programs and create Ministry of Health posts in each district in each city for these medical professionals, and the United States is committed to working with Bangladesh to make sure we can make that happen. So in closing, the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anew how absolutely vital epidemiologists are uh, to all of us. As we will hear, heart disease, mental health issues, environmental health concerns, such as air pollution and lead poisoning are on the rise all require a strong public health approach as tackling them are beyond the capacity of clinical doctors and nurses to solve alone. So for young health professionals wanting to make a difference in their community and in their country or the world, a career as a medical epidemiologist and public health expert is something to seriously consider your families and communities and the world will thank you. And let me just say from the bottom of a grateful heart, there's nothing I've done in almost four decades of public service that gives me more pride than being associated with frontline health professionals in the battle against diseases like HIV AIDS, what you all do as you battle COVID-19 and, and, risk, and risk your health. You really are the, the best of us. You do a very, very difficult job very, very well. And the citizens of this world that you protect and serve are in your debt. And don't about it. Thank you so much, um, Honorable U.S. Ambassador, Mr. Miller, for your brief but insightful speech. Uh, now, uh, we had pl a plan for our chief guest speech. However, due to some unavoidable circumstances, our chief guest, Mr. Mohammed Abdul Manan, cannot deliver his speech for this inauguration ceremony. So we'd like to request our chair, Professor Dr. Tahmina Shirin, Madam, to conclude the inauguration ceremony and uh, give her vote of thanks. Thank you.
I would like to thank all of you, His Excellency, Mr. Milan, uh, U.S. Ambassador to Bangladesh, our Chief Guest, um, our, our Secretary, Sir, um, Mohammed Abdul Manan, Sir, and other all distinguished guests, Mr. Justice from USAID and other, all other distinguished guests and audience who joined uh, with us online and offline. And I would like to thank you all for your patience sharing for all the day long and uh, remain with us for a whole day. Thank you, thank you all. And all of you, I, I would like to um, say one thing that stay safe and keep the people safe around you. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, so we here, we end the inauguration ceremony.